This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Stick around for a special offer and a funny skit that was paid for. Hey, what's up guys? It's Professor. We're here again with our new FL Studio 2020 MPK Mini Setup and Use Edition. All right, guys. So if you got yourself one of these, uh, let's get ready to hop on the video. I'm gonna show you the use of the pads, the use of the keys, and how to use them at the same time. And we're gonna start from beginning and installation. So make sure you have your MPK Mini, and make sure you have your printer cable to USB cord uh, that probably came with it, all right? If you guys don't have an MPK Mini yet, but you decide you want one, check out the link in the description where I will link the uh, official uh, Akai Amazon store uh, to grab it. Uh, that way you can pick one up. And uh, be sure to like the video and subscribe if you find this information useful. Let's hop right in. But first. Oh, hey, what's up, dude? Who are you? Oh, I'm your favorite streaming service, dude. Oh, dude, that's great. Do you want to hear the new track I finished? <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll check it out. All right, cool, I'm going to play it. I'm busy. I'm a big boy. Squawk, 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 squawk. I'm a big boy. Squawk, squawk. Yo, yo, what are you doing, dude? I'm taking your money, duh. Wait, what? Yeah, I mean, just because you're not making money doesn't mean I'm not making money. <laughs> oh, man. What the heck do I do about this? Luckily, our sponsor today has you covered. DistroKid is one of the biggest service for musicians that puts your music into online stores and streaming services. Then, when people listen to your music, they send you money. They have almost every possible service that you can think of covered, from Spotify to Apple Music, or even things like Google Play and YouTube Music. You have unlimited uploads with a basic plan for only $19.99 a year. But wait, more good news. DistroKid reached out to me, and we are working together to give you guys 7% off your plan when you sign up using my special link in the description below. That's, that's distrokid.com slash VIP slash professor for 7% off. One thing I really like about them that they take care of, and I think it's important, is they take care of giving your songs ISRC codes when you distribute through them. This makes sure you get paid royalties, even on free streaming services like SoundCloud. So be sure to click the link in the description to check them out, show them some love, and start getting paid for your music. Thanks, DistroKid. Now, back to the video. So. Basically, the first thing you're going to want to do when you have this is, of course, plug it in on the side. Then we're going to need to plug the uh, USB part into one of the USB slots on your computer. Great. Uh, great. So when you have it plugged in, make sure this light turns on. That means you're getting power sent to your MPK Mini. All right. Now we're going to start off by opening FL Studio. And we're gonna set uh, this up as a generic controller. Let's go and do that. All right, good, good, good. Let's go ahead and look at uh, this. So basically, uh, first, you're going to want to go into your options and then you'll go to your MIDI settings, all right? Now, uh, you're going to see the MPK Mini 2 on your output. Uh, make sure you have that enabled. I would say, you know, port one, sync that to one. I want to send it to master sync. And then as well, uh, you can synchronize it to the MIDI clock here as well. Then your input, you need to make sure it's your MPK mini two also, same number, and you need to make sure it's enabled. If it's not enabled, it's not gonna do anything. So make sure you have it enabled. 
and make sure your controller type is the generic controller since there is no built-in Akai MPK mini layout for this within FL Studio. We're gonna use generic controller. Your ports are gonna match up, all right? After that, boom, you're good to go. And uh, now your MPK should start, start responding when we use things. Now, uh, let's go ahead and start first start by opening up uh, FL keys, all right? So let's open up a, um, an example. Let's open up an instance of FL keys and let's also open up an instance of FPC, all right? So we have FL keys and FPC. Now, I'm gonna go switch my camera. Be right back, guys. All right, guys. So let's take a look at what we got here. I'm gonna resize my studio to make sure we got everything on the cameras. We have our MPK set up. Things are lighting up when we press it, but we're not getting any sounds right now, and that's fine, it doesn't matter. Let's first go check FL keys. Let's highlight FL keys, make sure it's active, and then... Perfect, great. FL keys is already active. A few quick tips. Remember, you can uh, go to octave up to change. The octave up and down will change where the uh, keys are on like a full scale piano, all right? So that's great, uh, pretty straightforward. Now let's go check out FPC. We're gonna go look at the drum pads and how to use them, okay? You might notice that these aren't, either they're not responding or they're not lined up from left to right in order according to FPC. Now, there is a way to fix that. And what we'll do is we'll click on this arrow here. We'll go to map notes for entire bank, all right? Now, it starts from the bottom left and then goes sideways, up a row, up a row, up a row. So let's start from the bottom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Then change to bank B or A, then. Great, now all of my uh, things are correctly um, mapped. Now you might notice a delay between when you hit and when you hear the sound. If you do, you can go to options, audio settings, and you can turn down the uh, buffer length for what you're working with, all right? And this will make it almost instant. So it might be easier to make a beat if you're doing stuff like that. Let's see. Let me uh, mute my microphone. Now, if you don't like how the uh, they're coming in at different levels, depending on how, now if you don't like that they're coming in at different levels, depending on how hard you hit, you can uh, go to full level, which is right here. Now, everything that you hit will be max velocity. All right. Everything's a max level. Great. So now that you've mapped your entire bank, you'll want to go ahead and save the note layout so you can load it up next time. I'll save this as my MPK pad layout note. Save. Yes, it already exists. You'll type yours in, uh, and then you'll save it as. Now, if you ever load up an FPC instance and it's not mapped, you can go to load note layout. You can load up, and then... Everything should be exactly where you need it to be. Great, right? Now, I know you guys are gonna ask the question, I want to use the keys and the piano at the same time. I wanna use the piano and the drum pads at the same time. Why is it not working? That's because we need to tell the RAM inside of the MPK to work this way, all right? So now I'm gonna show you guys how we'll go about doing that. First, uh, sa I'll save this little project. You can save it too if you want. I'm gonna save this as MPK tutorial. 
Now I'm gonna close this. Make sure you have FL Studios closed. FL Studio. Make sure you have FL Studio closed when you do this because you're gonna need to download the MPK uh, software setup. Now, here it is. It's the Akai MPK Professional MK2 Editor. I'll give you guys the link in the description where you can go download this off the Akai's website. I'm gonna load this up right now. Basically what we're gonna need to do is tell down here the pad and the MIDI keyboard controls, the pad channel and the keyboard controls need to be different, all right? You can make either of them one or two, but they must be separate one and two, okay? It doesn't matter if the pad's two or the keyboard is two. They have to be different. Now, the reason why they have to be different is because we need to make sure that FL Studio knows we wanna play two different channels when we uh, have them highlighted. And the only thing that matters is the which way we order them. That's why the one and two is important. So I'm going to click one and I'm gonna make this two. And then I'm going to go to send to program one. I'm gonna send it to program one, all right? Click my input, my output, apply. Click OK. So it's sent there now. And then I'm click send to RAM. Now, what we just programmed with program one and send to RAM is how it's going to act within the MPK. Now, one thing you're going to also want to do is make sure that your MPK is on the first program and not acting on two, three, or four. See how this is one, the things change up for number two, three, and four? So you can check by holding program select and then whichever one is highlighted is the one your MPK is going to be acting as. So hold program select and press program one, the one we just made. Now we'll go ahead and close the MPK settings. The reason why we have to close FL Studio is because if you don't and FL Studio is open while you try to edit that on the MPK editor, it will cause the uh, your programs to crash. It won't cause the computer to crash, it'll just cause FL Studio or the MPK to crash and say there's not enough memory to work with. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna open up our uh, project that we had set up before. Let's, all right guys, so let's check FL keys. Great, let's check FPC. Notice how the green one is highlighted. That means your active channel. Great, it's looking good, it sounded good. But wait, Professor, why aren't they working in tandem? Well, this is what we need to do. We have to hold control on the keyboard and then drag a selection like this so that both of these are selected. Now, oops, I have them on the wrong order. Let's quickly go to FL keys and then we can hold Alt and press down. We want to move it below FPC if it is not playing correctly. Now, I know because I have my pad set for one and I set my keys for two. I have these both selected. Now, check this out. Now, I can play them both separately at the same time. Now, you might be wondering, okay, now how do I record? Luckily, I got you covered. Let's go into here and post a blank uh, pattern into your playlist. I'll make mine four bars long, all right? I'm going to set it to loop, and I'm going to click record up here, all right? Now make sure my channels are good, yep. I'm gonna go record, notes, and automation. Now you'll want to probably set your metronome on, that way you can hear the tempo of the song. You can also click wait for input to start playing, or you can set it to loop record. If you don't have loop record on, it'll go to here and then it will end. So let me show you a quick recording technique. And I'm gonna turn on my three, two, one, countdown before recording. and it stops, see? Now, it's gonna be hard to build a beat like that, right? Let's control Z to undo that. Let's turn on loop recording and let's set the project to a tempo we like. I'll think of a beat in my head. 
Now, loop recording, you guys are going to see why I like this. But if you're going to do it this way, you're also going to need to turn on blend recording. The reason why is if you don't, and I'll show you just uh, two bars long what will happen, you'll notice that the notes will overwrite each other and delete. Record, notes and automation. See how the original beat I made the first time is gone? And if I start typing in piano notes, it's gonna delete the original ones too. So let's control Alt Z until those are gone. Now we're gonna turn on blend recording. This makes it so that it won't delete previous parts that you've already recorded. So let me come up with a quick rift in my head that I wanna make. All right. Notes in automation, and let me mute my mic. No, it doesn't sound great, it doesn't sound perfect, but it doesn't matter because we're just talking about the concepts and now how you guys can utilize that. And if things aren't completely on time, you can also go up in here and highlight everything, and then you can go to Tools, and you can go to Quick Quantize. This will snap your notes to the beat, whether it's a piano or whether it's drums. So we've talked about how to use the FPC, and the keys separately. We've talked about we've talked about how to use them together and set them up. And we've talked about recording and loop recording. It should be uh, pretty much everything that can get you guys going. Oh wait, bonus tip. All right, guys. So you want to know how to use these knobs, right? You're in luck. I got you covered. So. The knobs can be linked to anything. It can be linked to something on the mixer. Check this out. I'll right click this and I'll click link to controller. All right. Now I'll adjust the knob I want to link it to. Wow, very cool. Now let's try something else. Let's make a new pattern. Du -du 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 -du. Let's open up Flex, which you guys will probably be using in uh, FL Studio because Flex is awesome, all right? Let's go find a sound that we like within Flex. Great, sounds 80s, old school, I like it, let's use it. So now that we have Flex up, let's go ahead and link these knobs to something, okay? I'll right click and I'll link to controller and I'll wiggle the knob, okay? Right click, link to controller, and such forth and so on. You can link almost anything. Check this out. I'll even link my pitch to here. Excuse me. Boom, boom, boom. So now I got my pitch kind of set. I can mess around with that. Want that to, I don't, though I don't recommend messing around with pitch like that. And let's do our cutoff. Now let's let's, let's play the sounds.
so you can use your knobs to link with many, many parameters in FL Studios. You can even link them to the left and right channels here. It's almost endless. With all these tools that you guys uh, have now available to you, I'm hoping you enjoy them. Uh, your arpeggiator works on either internal timing or external timing, depending on how you set that up in your editor. Let's go look at that. Normally, it'll be on internal timing, which means the tempo is counted within F within the MPK. And this is where you'll tap tempo. Tap, 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 tap. And the arpeggiator will work on that tempo. But if you go to the MPK, a uh, Kai Professional here, you'll see that we have a option here down for clock, internal. You can change this to external. And if you apply external, it will always sync up with the project that you uh, have loaded in FL Studios. So rather than having to tap tempo every time, you'll be able just to have it synced up to the 140, all right? But uh, if you have it internal, you can always just... And let's turn the timing up. Watch this. If I hold on and I press... Basically, you have to hold the on and press one of these values. You'll see 1-4, one 1-4-T, four, one four that's 1-4 triplet, 1-8, one 1-8 eighth, one eighth triplet, etc. up to here. This is going to adjust how quickly your arpeggiator acts within the MIDI, uh, or not the MIDI, within the uh, tempo that is assigned. Guys, I hope this was helpful. Let me switch my camera back on. Guys. I hope that this video was helpful and useful. Overall, guys, I really like this piece of hardware. I think it's really versatile, it's useful, and it's great for traveling on the go. I give it a 10 out of 10. I really like the Akai products and what they make, so, I mean, if you guys wanna see something else covered, let me know, I'll see what I can do to get my hands on it. If you have any questions, I have some extra videos on my channel that gets more specific into the details of the MPK. So check my channel out, and it might be able to help you find some more advanced techniques with this, or uh, answer a further question. Like I said, leave it in the comment below, comment section below if you have any. I always try and answer those. Um, uh, go check out my uh, FL Studio playlist where you can learn how to use FL Studio even further and uh, more advanced techniques. If you're new to FL Studio, check out my class on Skillshare talking about the basics for learning your way around FL Studio. Uh, that class goes over everything from the beginning and also that class is rated five stars by users on Skillshare. Be sure to subscribe because if you come back, there's gonna be more content to learn about like the Akai Fire. I'm gonna be doing demonstrations where I make beats with this on the go. Um, and if you wanna purchase the MPK Mini, check the first link in the description, the Amazon link where you can purchase one and it helps me out as well. I'm gonna put the uh, link to the MPK programmer in the description as well too, guys. Check that out, check out the shops, check out the social media links, uh, follow me on Instagram, that way I can get some cool, uh, some cool guests on here for a podcast, and uh, check out the Patreon if you do so feel inclined to help further support me. I give away free beats on there as well. Guys, gonna have more videos coming out. Thanks so much for dropping by. Thanks so much for checking out the video. Leave a like, it helps me a lot, guys. And I hope you guys have an amazing week day year doesn't matter keep grinding all right guys this has been professor i'm gonna go edit this video and take it easy guys peace once again guys big shout out to distro kid for sponsoring this video it really helps me create more content for you guys so be sure to go show them some love check them out let them know what goes down here with the goon squad and a special thanks to my patrons as well you guys rock thanks for helping to support me in an extra way. And to all my subscribers, I love you all as well. All right, we out, guys.